Hello there, my fellow mech warriors, and welcome to another healthy dose of the Battle Mechs of Battletech. Today we are gonna cover a heavy mech which is a bit more obscure than your Marauders and Warhammers and whatnot. This is known as the Flashman, and while I don't exactly remember who recommended it, I know it was a subscriber, to which I am now saying thank you. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? A few basic stats on this big guy include It is a heavy class, like I said before, massing at 70 tons, a top speed of almost 65 kilometers an hour, and a rounded cost of 6.07 million sea bills. The Flashman is a rather underrated heavy battle mech, commonly nicknamed by other mech warriors as the Flash Bulb because of its heavy energy weapon configuration. It was first introduced in 2701, a mech capable of engaging the enemy for longer periods of time with little to no resupply. This made it one of the most prized battle mechs in a commander's arsenal during the Star League and saw heavy use in line regiments, typically in a fire brigade role for heavy and assault lances. During advances it would stay to the rear and protect against ambush and provide fire support for its lancemates. Towards the end of the Star League, several divisions had entire battalions composed of nothing but the Flashman, and because of that popularity the mech saw a lot of use in the front lines. When the Star League dissolved, the design spread among the successor states. Unfortunately, by the beginning of the First Succession War, only 500 Flashmen were still operational. Their heavy use during the fighting saw many of them destroyed and the production of brand new ones stopped in 2796, when the Renault Prime Industries on Wasat was destroyed. The Flashman was saved from extinction, however, thanks to Defiance Industries which was able to acquire the schematics and produce a downgraded version at their Hesperus II plant. Because they owned the only remaining Flashman factory in the Inner Sphere and could actually replace their combat losses, the Lyran Commonwealth remained the biggest user of the Flashman throughout the Succession Wars, or at least until the unveiling of the Com Guards. Comstar also supplied examples of the downgraded Flashman to the Draconis Combine in part of Operation Rosebud. Following the recovery of the Hell Memory Core, Defiance Industries was eventually able to restart the proper production of the original Flashman in 3050, and then build new variants for Comstar too. When the Word of Blake seized control of the Defiance Industries factory, they also produced new variants which were then supplied for their militia in the Jihad. The primary weapons on the original Flashman were three Celetex Radonic large lasers, mounted in the right arm, the left arm and the center torso. These were backed up by another five Ichiba 3000 medium lasers, two mounted in either arm coaxial to the large lasers one in either side torso, and one mounted in the rear to ward off attackers. The Flashman also carried a buzzsaw anti-missile system with one ton of ammo in the right torso, to defend against missile attack, and a Zippo Mark X anti-personal flamer in the head, to deter infantry attack. The use of a targeting tracking system gave the Flashman a very high level of accuracy, while 15 double heatsinks gave it a decent heat management system. The mech was also notable for using an extra light engine, which makes it quite fast for its size, although not at the expense of protection, of which it had 13 and a half tons. A couple of variants of this thing include The FLS 7K While a far cry from the deadly 8K Flashman, the 7K was a downgraded version produced by Defiance after the destruction of the Renault factories. The advanced extra light engine was no longer being produced though, and with a standard Vlar 300, the design only had a top speed of about 64 kph. In addition, the torso laser and the AMS was also removed, and the double heatsinks replaced by the standard model. 
Weapon-wise, this one carried two R-mounted large lasers and five Defiant B3M medium lasers. Surprisingly, the armor was not affected in any way. Following the reintroduction of the 8K later on, production of this one finally ceased. The FLS-9B This one is the first variant produced by the Word of Blake in 3068, following their conquest of Asperus II. The 9B has a light fusion engine, a compact gyro, an endosteel structure, light ferrofibrous armor, and a small cockpit. 12 double heatsinks kinda struggle to cool the all-laser configuration. Two ER large lasers enable this flashman to strike from a long distance. Another two ER medium lasers, two medium pulse lasers, and an ER small laser are powerful for closer up. A C3I computer enables it to share targeting data with other like equipped units. The FLS 9C this one was a complete overhaul of the Flashman produced by Defiance Industries for Comstar in 3061. It carries three ER large lasers, five medium lasers, and an improved C3 computer. In order to accomplish all of that, the armor on the design was upgraded to ferrofibrous, and the mech now had an endosteel chassis. The FLS 9M this one is the second Word of Blake variant introduced in 3070, and built for the House Merrick loyal units to the Blakeists. The 9M utilizes the endosteel chassis and a light engine, although it is a smaller engine with a top speed of 64 kph, which enables this Flashman to carry two heavy PPCs. Unfortunately, the heat dissipation system is strained to the very limit just to keep up with the PPCs. Up close, four medium lasers and four medium pulse lasers deliver devastating firepower. And now, since the lore on the Flashman is a bit slim, I decided to supplement the rest of the episode with the story of a famous Flashman pilot, known as David Kalasa. David Kalasa, born in 2766 and died in 2821, was the first Khan of the Clan Sea Fox, which would later become known as Clan Diamond Shark. David Kalasa shared two important things in common with many clan warriors of the period. One was a strong devotion to the ideas of Nicholas Kerensky's new society, the other being the scarcity of information regarding his pre-clan life. It is known that David Kalasa was born on the Capellan world of St. Ives. His childhood dream was becoming a mech warrior and fight alongside the famous General Alexander Kerensky against the usurper Stefan Amaris. But this dream would not come to pass, because he only finished his training as the campaign to liberate Terra came to an end. He would accompany the SLDF during the Exodus, leaving the corrupted successor states to their own scheming and plotting. He was a devoted follower of Nicholas Kerensky, following him to Strana Mektai on the second Exodus too. His skill as a warrior and his belief in Kerensky's vision were so strong that the Il Khan would appoint him as the first Khan of the clan Sea Fox in 2807. Dropping onto the world of Babylon in early July of 2821, as part of the campaign to reclaim the Pentagon worlds, the city-state of Kamlan was chosen as the first target. After an initial desire by the four clans to hit the strongest power on the world, an attempt aimed at quickly cowing the other minor powers on the planet. That plan, however, would never leave the table. Once she understood the situation that the clans faced, the second-in-command of Kalasa, Star Colonel Karen Nagasawa, would hastily issue commands for the four clans to coordinate a strike against the well-organized defenders, after leading a bombing run over their main positions. Khan Kalasa led the bulk of his clan into position and began the attack in earnest. Two of the other clans had other things occupying them at the moment, as the Ice Hellions and Cloud Cobras did. They could do little but held themselves out of problem after problem in the chaos of their initial landing. But the other clan, Clan Coyote, did not respond for a different reason. 
The Coyote Khan, Dana Kufal, took grave exception to Nagasawa's presumption of command in the operation. The Sea Fox Colonel's use of what she considered dishonorable tactics also made Clan Kufal angry. Angry enough to feel that she should teach the upstart Nagasawa a lesson. Kufal ordered her coyotes to stand back and not interfere unless attacked directly. Watching from nearby as Khan Kalasa and the Sea Foxes faced their first major challenge alone. David Kalasa would lead many charges against the defenders, fighting into the night and well into dawn. But at some point his skill could carry his mech no further and his luck would run out. His flashman was completely obliterated by concentrated heavy weapon fire after having downed 11 enemy battle mechs while also leading two of the remaining mech warriors from his command star. David Kalasa would die, and the losses sustained in the battle were heavy throughout the clan. His warriors would take the city eventually, and then moved on to other continents, away from the other clans assigned to take the rebellious desert planet. The Sea Foxes would take the loss of their first Khan very poorly, blaming the other clans for his death, especially the Coyotes. His protege though, Karen Nagasawa, would be elected a Khan at the urging of the clan Sea Fox Sakan Diane Senate, remaining loyal to what she felt her deceased Khan would have wanted. The later generations of the clan would regard David Kalasa as an inspired placeholder, a great warrior and a leader who paved the way for their most influential Khan. The founder of the Kalasa blood name house, his genetic heritage is prominent in all the branches of the clan Stuman, regardless of what the clan might call itself at the time. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Flashman and one of its famous pilots, David Kalasa, for today. Now, is the Flashman among your favorite battle mechs? What do you like or dislike most about it? Did you use it or fight against it in any of your games? As always, I look forward to your stories, opinions, and facts which I probably missed in the comments below. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, please click the like, share, and subscribe buttons for future content. You can also stay a bit more up to date with my content by clicking on the bell notification icon. Thank you very much for watching to the end, and I wish you all a great and healthy day. This is GDN signing out.